Hello and welcome to the Alpha Software Demo and Q&A webcast. I'm Dave McCormick, VP of Product Management here at Alpha Software, and I'm very pleased to be joined by Robin Bennett, the founder of Start Software. Robin today is going to be giving a really interesting presentation. He's going to be working with uh, Transform, but he's going to be working with AI, which is a topic I know all of you probably have a lot of interest in. So uh, just a quick reminder, this is a Q&A session, so you can ask questions by typing them into the questions box or the chat window of the GoToWebinar control panel. You can also send your email to guides, G-U-I-D-E-S, at alphasoftware.com. So let's get started. Hello, Robin, are you there? I am, Dave. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm just going to drop off camera, and I'm going to make you the presenter. So you should see a dialogue box. And I'll let I you do. know. And there's your screen. I'm looking at your power, PowerPoint or uh, cool. the Google version of it. There Very we go. Nice. Can you see that? Yeah, full screen now? Yep, looks perfect. Perfect. This is four for the price of one today, Dave. You always get a bargain with Start Software. So this, we're looking at Alpha Anywhere, we're looking at Transform, we're looking at ChatGPT for the AI side of things, and we're even touching on Alpha Cloud as well. Um, there's a reason I've got Batman and Robin on the front page, by the way, but uh, we'll come to that in a moment. Uh, just a very quick um, mention about who we are at Start Software. So we're a, a company of almost 20 people now. We've grown since we last spoke, Dave. Um, we do predominantly alpha development work, so that's in Alpha Anywhere. Uh, we've just returned to Alpha Transform. We haven't looked at Transform for a little while, but we've just returned to it and really enjoying Transform. We do troubleshooting for other developers. We give consultancy to companies and other developers. We do a little bit of mentoring. We build systems. We've even got a, a brand new website at startsoftware.com, which we've just launched. And I'll just flash that on the screen because I'm rather proud of it, Dave. There we go. There's our offices on a lovely sunny day. You see Very that nice. okay? Yeah. yeah there's a, some of our UK team. No, we, that is, that's, that's typical UK weather. We've been over that, right? <laughs> <laughs> we have been over that yeah it is and yes it is typical uk weather um and if you click through from here you can see some of the services that we deliver for alpha based products um and also i've even collated dave some of the webinars that you and i have done in That's the right. past yeah which is really nice so i'll be popping this one on the same list when you publish it to youtube so that's a little bit about us do get in touch if you if you think we can help um but what are we looking at today? So, what on earth have I got Batman and Robin? Are you familiar with, you know Batman and Robin, Dave, don't you? I bet you're a fan. Everyone knows Batman. I think everyone Exit. knows Batman and Robin. So my name is Robin. Um, and <laughs> so I was wondering, are you the sidekick, yeah. though? Is, I am the sidekick. To okay. You, yep. To you, Dave, you're Batman in this case. <laughs> That's a high honor, man. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Wow. I always imagine you wearing your underwear outside your trousers. That's what it is. <laughs> Specifically, we're actually talking about bats today. This is the thing. This is, I don't know how we've got to this point, but we're, we're actually working with a bat surveying company at the moment, an ecology consultancy. And something that we wanted to do for them in, the, in their application, which is a transform based application. I thought, hey, this is something that AI can help with. So this presentation has a, has a bit of bat in it. It has a bit of chat GPT in it, but I want to show you the effect first. I do like a bit of magic, as you know. Um, we've talked about that before as well. And with magic, there's an effect, and then there's the method. And sometimes it's different methods to give the same effect. But let me show you the effect first, and then we'll talk through the method. So this is transform. If you've not looked at transform, if you're on the webinar today for the first time and transform isn't something you've touched on, perhaps you're an alpha anywhere developer like us, but you have not really delved into transform. How would you describe it, Dave? A mobile data capture form designer tool with integrated yeah. analysis and reporting. Does that sound? That sound sounds good? very good. Yeah. In fact, I think chat GPT couldn't even do better if I asked. <laughs> so, yeah. As I mentioned, we've just returned to Transform. We looked at it when uh, you first launched it and we did some projects and then we've just been busy with other things for a while. We've just returned to it and we're thoroughly enjoying our experience. I have to say it's it's fast and it's cool and it's very tight. It feels really well put together. Um, and the programming language that's built into Transform, which is TPL, is also really good because it's uh, easy to write, it's secure, it's fast, it's easy to debug. 
So if you're an alpha anywhere developer watching this um, today, get in, get and try um, Transform. You can also, when you sign up, I think you can have like a free account now, Dave. Is there that is right? There is a free tier. You can use it for free forever. Yep. Cool. So, yeah. so back into our BAT application. So we've got a real new client. They're an ecology consultancy, and they would survey buildings for evidence of um, bats and other creatures before development work is done. And in particular, I think they work for big organizations who might own all of the properties in a street, for example, like a council. Um, and the council are going to re-roof all of the properties. And so before they do, they need to make sure there's no endangered creatures living there like bats. Bats over here are sort of a protected species. I imagine they probably are with you too. So they go out at the moment on paper, collecting information about what they can see and whether they can see evidence of bats. They go back to the office with their paperwork and their photos, and at the moment they write it up by hand. So this we've turned into a transform application. Nothing too special so far. If you're into transform, you'll know what I'm talking about. And here we see the form we've put together for them. So there's some setup information about the job in hand. There's an introduction section that they fill in. There's a bit of information about what they know about the area they're going to. And then specifically, and this is where it gets interesting, they go, this is, this is the section, Dave, where they're recording what they're seeing. And so multiple surveys, uh, multiple properties in a street or in a collection of streets. And then they're looking at each property and recording what they can see. So this is the high street. Um, we'll, we'll say it's, uh, in a, I could, I've got like a geocoding thing going on here, but I could say it's in a town or whatever. This is number four high street, number five high street, number six high street etc and each of these is like a, a repeating record in a data group that's what it's called in transform and on each at each property i'll probably take a picture i'm saying whether there's evidence um that there could be bats roosting there so negligible low medium or high so this is like a scale i'll change that onto medium and i can also say whether there's evidence of breeding birds because again that might cause the the developers an issue while we're here, we'll add one more. So this is, I've got up to property number 24 High Street before. So we'll go to property number 27. And we'll say there is medium evidence uh, or medium likelihood of bats. And no, there's no evidence of breeding birds. So this is fine. This is great. This all works perfectly on a mobile. I'll go out and do this on their tablet or their phone. Or they could do it back in the office like I'm doing it on my laptop here. But here's the clever bit. Here's the effect. If I scroll down, I've got this uh, area which Lucas, our new member of staff, put together for us, uh, which is giving us a summary of that data. Now, ordinarily, they'd be doing this by hand. So they'd be looking through, it might be hundreds of records, and saying 50 have got high likelihood of bats, 30 have got low, or they might categorize it a different way, or they might be might be that all of the properties have got evidence or have got likelihood of bats or evidence of breeding birds. They, they're doing this by hand at the moment, and it's a chore that they don't want to have to do. So we've plugged the list or that repeating section, that, that data group in Transform, into um, ChatGPT. And if I click these buttons, we're going to get an automatic summary of the data. Every time I click here, so this is going to give me that's one version of the summary. This is another version. There's, there's house 27. Look, it's just now popped up. This is another version, all different formats, but the same sort of a, the um, different formats, but the same information presented differently. And it's doing it through ChatGPT. The interesting thing, Dave, is if I click it again, the same button, this will vary slightly as it just has. It's the same information, but just rewritten. Each time you ask ChatGPT a question, ChatGPT being the AI platform we've plumbed into, you'll get a slightly different variant of the answer. That's one of the things that's built into these AI platforms. They randomize the results a little bit each time. Mm -hmm. So in fact, you can keep clicking it until you've got the summary that you really like. And you can see the structure here is really nice. It, it writes it as if, you know, as if it's been written by hand, Dave. Yeah, very nice. It is, isn't it? It's cool. Yeah. So how, yeah, that's the effect. Let's walk through how we actually put it together. So what I'm gonna do, is I'm going to show you the method, which is transform calling an API. We're not actually calling ChatGPT's API, and I'll explain why when we get to that page. 
I'm, I'm showing you how we built the API in Alpha Anywhere. So we're actually Transforms calling an Alpha, Alpha Anywhere built uh, REST API. How we call that to ChatGPT, which is the AI platform, and a little footnote at the end. Uh, I mentioned that we like uh, magic and we did a webinar for you a while ago, which was a lot of fun. I think it was on a dev day, I think, um, which showed how we can say uh, hello world using, I think it was 10 different methods. Um, that one's worth, worth um, looking up or perhaps Dave, when you do the notes for this one on YouTube, you could put a link to it. So people Absolutely. can watch that one. Yeah. Cool. Right, let's get stuck in then. Let's have a look at how we put it together. Well, you've seen the effect in uh, in the BAT application, but let me show you it in a simpler one so it's a bit easier to understand what's going on. So if I just go back to here, and let me look at this transform form that I've put together called Summarize Anything. And all this does, Dave, it's got three fields on it, three multi-line fields, a space to put a big block of text, the prompt, which is going to go across to ChatGPT, a prompt when you're talking to AI platforms is the question you're asking it. So you form a question, you call it a prompt, um, in, a, in as precise a form as you need to, and then the AI platform will give you the result. And this is the bottom button here is, uh, box is where the result comes in. So all I did here is paste in some data from a BAT survey. Um, as I change this data, so if I just take out the full stop at the end, this is automatically writing the prompt. This prompt might look weird to some people because you can see a space between Twycross and Street has been represented by percentage 20. We've got other weird percentage things going on. This form is just an encoded form. When you're talking to APIs, sometimes you have to encode the data uh, so that spaces and slashes and apostrophes and things are getting um, passed through properly. That's all that's going on here. I'll show you how to do that in a moment. And this button calls ChatGPT and will return a summary of the information here. And as I mentioned, each time I click it, I'll get a slightly different summary. So what we'll do in a second is I'll show you how we actually um, put that together. In fact, I think I'll show you that now. So if I look in Transform itself and look in the design of this form, we'll see that we've just got these three fields, enter a big block of text field, the prompt for chat GPT field, and the result field. And then what we've got is the button, which actually calls chat GPT, and we've got some custom code which when you change the big block of text, there's some code that runs here on the changed event. And that's actually, it might be very hard to read on the screen. It's very small on, the, on my screen, Dave, but you get the idea. It's putting the prompt together using the word, please summarize this information. And then it's encoding the information it's um, sending across using a TPL function called encode URI component. And then on the button, there's some, uh, there's some code which runs to actually call the service, the API, which is my API that I've written. I'll show you do that in a moment. And it just passes through the information in a, in a special format. This special format is something you can find on the internet really easily. Or if you pause the video and you're watching this back on YouTube, you can see how I put that together. So it's just calling out to the API and returning the information. So that's the sort of a simpler version of the effect. In other words, paste a whole load of information in, it creates a prompt for ChatGPT and then returns the summary. The really amazing thing about this, and it is amazing, is that whatever you paste in here, doesn't have to be to do with bats, it could be a list of um, defects in a piece of uh, machinery, it could be a list of vehicles that have been inspected. Whatever you paste in, ChatGPT makes sense of the data, and returns a sensible summary. And that's the bit that takes a bit of thinking about. So if people are watching this thinking, oh, I could just code that by hand, you could, but for each different type of data, you'd have to code the summary by hand differently by writing, you know, if you're just doing this now for anywhere, for example, X basic code, if you're doing it in transform, you'd be using TPL. But ChatGPT can understand the content, uh, in inverted commas, understand, it, it makes sense of the content because of the uh, information that it has at hand and therefore produces an intelligent summary of whatever data you give it. 
That means with this bat one, for example, we can apply the same bit of code, the same button, the same effect to any list of data, whether it's a survey about bats or birds or badgers or beavers or anything else. And we can also use the same technique in any application, transform or alpha anywhere, no matter whatever the, whatever the data is. So this is a universal data summary thing. That's the really interesting thing, I think, about this effect. Does that make sense, Dave? Is it a little bit complicated, but sort of making sense? It does make sense. I mean, it doesn't need to know anything about what the your alpha anywhere transform application doesn't need to know anything about the results because, well, chat GPT will sort it out for it. I like yeah, that. it doesn't. It doesn't need to know anything about the data you're sending it. Yeah. It doesn't even need to know the context. It will just summarize it, and it and it works really, really well. So this is the method as a picture. So we've got transform in this case, or it could be an alpha anywhere application, calling an API that I've written in alpha anywhere. That's calling out to Chat GPT, and the alpha anywhere API itself we published to Alpha Cloud as a brilliant platform to to host the um, the API that I wrote. Anybody looking at this diagram is going to think, well, hang on, why didn't I just go from transform through to chat GPT? The reason for that is that transforms forms are what's called client side. So they're living in the app on your device or they're living in the web browser if you're doing it in a, if you're filling in the form on a web browser on your laptop. Our API key for chat GPT, for open AI as it's called, would therefore be on the device or in the browser. And somebody clever could find that key and abuse our API key on ChatGPT. So I decided to write um, an intermediary service in Alpha Anywhere, which protects our key because that key then is stored in our, in, in the, on the server in our API code in Alpha Anywhere and therefore not accessible to client devices. So that's why I put this sort of middle layer in. Uh, I'll come on to that in a bit, and uh, at the very end of the presentation, I'll I'll explain probably why I didn't need to do this at all. But it seemed like a very good time, very good idea at the time. Sure. Let's just show how that works in a little bit more detail. So I, I did flash this up on screen before. Essentially, we're forming some content that's going to be sent through to the service that I wrote. Uh, it's as simple as that, and it's the prompt that goes through the Chat GPT API responds with a result and I'm just putting the result into the field here and this is the TPL code uh, that does that. So that's really quite sim simple. One thing to point out here is I've used the, the TPL command Ajax send request. Because I've used Ajax send request, this works when you're filling in a form on the web, so it, on your laptop, as well as when you're running transform as an app. There's an older function. I think it's called Ajax Get, Dave. I think that rings a bell, which it doesn't work on the web side of things. So you need to use Ajax Send Request. That's a little tip. Uh, and in fact, I'm going to flash up a, a documentation page in a minute, which shows you how you can find out all about Ajax Send Request and why, that, why you'd want to use that. So that's the transform end of things. Let's just see how we did the API now for anywhere. Now, I know, Dave, you've done lots of webinars about creating APIs in Alpha Anywhere. So I won't labor the point too much. Because again, I'm sure you can put a link or two um, on the YouTube when you come to post this one, but it's really quite straightforward. In Alpha Anywhere itself, that's where I am now, you have the web services section of the, the web projects control panel. You're creating a new web service, four options here. But the one I wanted to do was to create a definition to create a, a REST service. So this is a service that other things are going to call. Transform, in my case, could be another Alpha Anywhere application, could be another application written in another language. So I use this. You, um, we don't, we're not doing a database one, so we can ignore the bit at the top and start with an empty service. And this is the screen you end up with. Uh, you need a class, an X basic class, which is the code that defines what the service is going to do. And that in itself is also pretty straightforward because you can go to the XBasic section, create a new class. And once you have a new class, there's an insert button where you can insert the structure, the class definition for a REST API. I did this first. I hadn't done this, Dave, myself for a few months. It's a few months since I, I wrote a, a web service in Alpha Anywhere. 
I just had to refresh my memory how to do this. But the G this makes it really easy, doesn't it? Because it shows doesn't you. Doesn't just? Yeah, it's terrific. So that's that is the huge point I always tell people. So once you open that up, go into insert and use the the sample code because it's very easy to read. You can see what the status is supposed to be, where you're supposed to return the, where you get your inputs, where you're supposed to send it back. So yeah, that's it exactly. So you this in fact gives you a, a method immediately, which is fabulous. So you get a method for free, if you like, in your in your application. And then all I did was I went back to some code that I'd written before, uh, which did the call out to ChatGPT's API. Again, that's in um, another webinar. I've put the link in um, the presentation in a minute. I put that in the class. I then went back to the web service, and this is where it all gets hooked together. This dialogue is really, really straightforward once you've either gone through it once or you've just looked at the documentation or watched one of the, the past um, webinars, it's straightforward. And these are the methods I've defined. There's my sample method one. That's the one you get for free as part of the class definition. Um, this is the one I've, that I've just written. So this is how you build the, um, the how I built the API in Alpha Anywhere. Then I just use the publish feature to publish to Alpha Cloud. I've said it before on webinars, we absolutely love Alpha Cloud. It's sensational in every respect. It's a complete game changer with, uh, with Alpha Anywhere deployments. Um, you've got so much flexibility, so much power, so much resilience, reliability, all the rest of it, it's fabulous. And it's just one click in this case. And there was my, um, my API ready to be accessed. So that's how we did the API. So that's what Transform is calling and this, uh, my my code in the class is calling out to chat GPT. Um, Dion, I think, also did. Didn't Dion do um, a chat GPT thing in the last dev day? Uh, dev day, yeah. Yeah, he did, didn't he? So that, that's worth watching. He did some really cool things. He built a sort of, was it a chat bot, I think he's built? Something similar? Or it was a, a thing that understood his documentation, wasn't it? Like a... It could answer questions about a manual, I think. From memory. That's exactly it. It was answering questions actually about uh, furniture warranty of all things. So you could type in. How is it? Yeah. It was like my cat damaged my sofa. Is it covered? And then the chat GPT would say, well, are we talking about scratching or are we talking about whatever? And it was, uh, and the thing could tell you whether or not you were covered. So it was kind of a neat little use. Yeah, that it was. It was it was really good. And Dion showed how he plumbed into ChatGPT. There's lots of different ways you can do it. One of the questions I think I got last time we talked about ChatGPT on the webinars was, is it expensive? And I said at the time it hadn't been. It's proved not to be. Um, yeah. Our monthly bill is just a few dollars still. It's a ten, well, actually, to be to be honest, a few tens of dollars. But it's really nothing for the use that we make of it. It's really cost effective. My and understanding it, when I was looking at pricing is they they look at it in, I forget what the word is, like tokens, or but basically it turns out to be like number of characters in your request. It is. And then it. based on that and based on what engine you're going to use, it's a fraction of a penny to, to give you back that request. So That's it. So the shorter the prompt you send them, the shorter the response you get, the less it right. costs you. Um, mm -hmm. So you've got to be a little bit careful because, using, especially using the API, you can you can send lots of content in a prompt, and you can get big files back. Then it can start to add up. Gotcha. In, what is interesting, though, and again, if you've not experimented with ChatGPT, it's it's definitely worth a go. By the way, we've now got a motto in our company: mm -hmm. AI first. Whenever we've got a job to do, we we ask ourselves, can ChatGPT do it? I, I've come to that same conclusion that, in fact, whenever I've got a question to ask for that matter, I mean, it's it's ridiculous how much ChatGPT can really do very close to right the first time, you know, with just you there yeah. to clean it up a bit. So recently I've been and developing it, sample forms. So I said, okay. oh, here's, here's great. I'd, I'd like to come up with some sample forms for, say, um, a greenhouse uh, conditions and measurement. Can you Can you make up what the fields would be? And spat it back. I said, now can you make up what the fields would be just as fields so I can paste them right into transform? And it was a piece of Ah, oh, well, I was just yeah. about to say that to you. Oh, man. That's All right. right. Sorry. Oh, no, 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 no. That's cool. But this is what I'm working <laughs> on at the moment, actually. The, All right. Um, yeah. if you, when, you're, um, when you design a transform form, you've got access uh, to the, the commands in the form, mm -hmm. to what you'd be building manually, but as JSON. Yeah. And I've been working on a, on a, a new universal transform form designer in chat gpt dave so you could give it a a word version of a form and have it create this automatically and the json, I'm, I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. back oh my gosh so, 
so the idea would be if I can get it to work when you in the option here where you can add a form type to uh, transform you'd have select template copy selected add blank or build from AI yeah. and you could just paste the word document in and wow you know you'd get a, a good start who knows I'm, I'm getting somewhere but it's it's, it's not easy <laughs> it's not easy but yeah it is it, chat GPT is, is pretty incredible anything that anything to do with uh, words it's really good at so summarizing analyzing code it's very good at check code find yeah. errors in code optimize code it's so good so good it can be awful as we talked about last time it still can't play chess it still can't do maths very well yeah Although, the uh, arithmetic is terrible yeah it's funny well it isn't now i was just going to say it but now writes that? python yeah. code yeah did and you know I... it writes yeah writes python code now to do maths writes it itself and runs the python <laughs> insane so it's learning how to do that it's getting it's getting better and better that's anyway, really cool we digress, yeah. digress. yeah um so just back to my little slideshow yeah so there we go so that's how we did that this is how we call that this is how i did it using curl i, I do like curl it's nice and easy yeah. uh, but i think dion did it a different way in his presentation and if you want to look how i did it um in the webinar and i did a whole load of chat gpt with with dave here's the youtube um link and i'm sure dave will put that in in that one by the way in that webinar what we built during the webinar was a universal database designer built with chat gpt so you could ask it if you remember dave we were doing databases of hairstyles and cars right. and yeah. albums from the 70s that's the sort of thing we're trying to do i'm trying to do now with transform and forms you know could we have a universal transform form designer that would be so cool anyway lots of stuff and if you want to catch up about chat gpt I think that was about six months ago we did that webinar and, and that's mm -hmm. another one and another little demo i did just to show a bit of fun today this translate anything again just built in transform so if i go back to home and fill in a form this is a transform form again with uh, four fields this time enter a phrase pick a language it writes the prompt and then it produces the result so if i say um Amazing. let's translate two pints of beer uh, a glass of what's your favorite drink dave have you got a favorite drink oh i have many but let's go with a glass of well new england it would be iced coffee this time of year the colder iced it coffee. is the more iced, iced coffee, coffee okay yep and a bag of uh, oh crisp of uh, crisp you call them chips don't you chips yeah they're crisps with us but chips with uh, you oh, yeah. let's let's try that so if we say uh, let's translate that to portuguese one of my favorite places portugal and right. uh, let's see what it can come up with there we go that looks pretty good so this is a universal translator built in uh, transform Fantastic. this is so easy to do so this this one was um you can imagine what the code's doing here but let's have a look uh, together so here is the form so i've got a field to enter the phrase uh, i've got a list which is the language and i just Funnily enough, I asked ChatGPT for the list of all of the yep. most popular languages in the world. <laughs> That's how I got that list together. Yeah. There's the prompt, the button, and the result. So if we just look at the code involved, uh, if I enter a phrase, when I enter it, there's some changed code, which is building that prompt. So it says the prompt is, please translate whatever I've typed in into whatever language I've chosen. I haven't chosen a language, it puts it into Portuguese. Uh, if I change the language, okay. it's the same code. And then the button, it calls out to my um, API that I wrote, and it just passes it the prompt and pops the result in here. So we've built a universal translator um, in Transform. Very cool. It is very cool. And it's just what you need. You could take that out with you um, wherever you go. Of course, you do need um, a, an internet an internet connection absolutely yeah so transform works perfectly offline generally uh but with this sort of feature where you're calling an api you do need to be online so um i guess that's fair enough it can't carry the entire uh dictionary of all of those languages in its memory but um yeah that would be anything so else. speaking of apis um i know what you mean about using alpha anywhere as the intermediary to call another api i have found that very convenient myself that way i don't have to do a lot of TPL writing, TPL just sends everything over to Alpha, and then Alpha decides what it gets passed on. And as you pointed out, you can keep your secret keys on, uh, not on the device and things like that. Um, but you had mentioned that maybe you didn't have to do that. I was just yeah. 
Yeah, you're absolutely right. So this is this is it. So I did all of that middleware. I mean, in, in yeah. start to finish, I'm not exaggerating. I think it was two hours start to finish. So the whole thing I did, that summarized thing, the transform bit, the API, publish into Alpha Cloud, because I'd already written the, the chat GPT code before, so that was a bit of a cheat. Um, I think two hours start to finish got me the whole thing built. So that's how fast it was. But yeah. but I then found this web page, um, which was, this is after I did it, which was this one, the Alpha Transform Web Filler Release Notes. And this, um, I don't know exactly when this came out, Dave, you probably do, but this was the web filler part. So you can do your forms, fill them in on the web as well as do them on the app. Right. So that would have been the fall release. And we did make okay. a way right, so that you could hide your hide your code. Okay. Yeah. So what's in here is a really useful link, calling web services and transform forms. And there is actually a way of telling transform how to call the API that you want to call. So open AI in this case, the chat GPT API mm -hmm. and keep your key secret. That's mm -hmm. the point. So that's what this is all about. So if I'd have found this page first, I wouldn't have needed to have written the API in alpha anywhere at all. And it would have been a pure transform solution as it was. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed doing the, the alpha anyway, but anyway, and it was <laughs> good. Um, it was good practice. I hadn't done one in a while. But yeah, you can Excellent. do it entirely yeah. in Transform by following these instructions. Right. We I, we added that because although we knew it would be pretty hard to get that API key off a mobile device, once we had the web filler, it was trivial to get it out of the web filler. You know, you just went into device settings. So that's that's what we that's why that feature was added for security. Yeah, it's a it's a really yeah. really useful feature. Yeah. That said, um, there are some benefits to using Alpha Anywhere as an intermediary um, because you can you can make all kinds of changes and, and quickly. So. <laughs> You can make changes really easy, and um, I mean, our case, we put it. We're always very keen to put logging in our code, so we're we're logging everything that we're doing, so that we've got you know the ability to debug more easily, see how much use people are making of features. So you could write, you know, you can write records to a log table somewhere in a SQL Server somewhere, or you know, um, MySQL database. Um, and as you say, you've got a lot more control if you do it yourself. Um, Alpha Cloud very um, scalable and resilient, so it's going to be there you know, whatever, however much um, um, impact you have, how much, however busy your application is as well. So yeah, the Alpha Cloud, Alpha, uh, Alpha Anywhere part to this uh, was an important one. And that summarize feature, so the feature that I've just plugged into Transform at the moment, we're definitely going to plug it into our main applications that we build out in Alpha Anywhere. So we've got an application called Alpha Tracker, which is a an ap application that asbestos surveyors use primarily and we're going to put a button on the system so that people can summarize asbestos registers and asbestos across buildings using exactly the same api call so we're going to reuse this feature now in lots of places um, and that that so having it in deployed from an alpha anywhere alpha cloud api means that um, we can do that we can we can use it from anywhere if we'd have just done it in one place yeah, yeah yeah exactly if we'd just done it in transform then we couldn't so yeah, it was, it was probably the, the long-term solution anyway. Well, this so is that's, fascinating. Yeah. There you go. So that's really it. So just to recap, what we've built there is um, it's a sort of a universal summarize anything feature that we've deployed in Transform to our, for our new client, our ecology consultant, the one that does the bat surveys. And that's mm -hmm. going to save them such a lot of time when they're writing their reports. Um, so we've deployed it already into Transform. We will be deploying it into Alpha and your applications. And I showed how we sort of plug things together here. So I showed how we plugged transform to Alpha Anywhere, Alpha Anywhere to Alpha Cloud, and then the chat GPT part as well. And that's it. That's me wrapped up, Dave, I think. That's very cool. So we do have a couple of questions. Um, the one is, do you have any tips on how you can take sensitive data and put it into Ch chat GPT? How do you might sanitize it or obfuscate it before it's it's yes. Now, uh, guess what? Guess what's very good at sanitizing data and looking for personal data in text? Chat GPT, GPT itself. Yeah. Exactly. And so we've yeah, we we work for a legal organisation over here in the UK, and yeah. we're using Chat GPT to do a variety of things for them. One of their fears was that people would post personally identifiable information, so names and addresses. Sure. Um, into ChatGPT and somehow ChatGPT would make use of that information. Now, ChatGPT, all of the platforms are different, so I'm only talking about ChatGPT here, but 
their terms and conditions do say that they won't reuse data and that your data is safe. Yep. But you've got to be you know, extra careful. So what we've actually done is we pass the text we're going to pass to ChatGPT through ChatGPT first, and we ask it to remove personally identifiable information and replace with XXX and YYY. So it'll say, um, please comment on Mrs. XXX's will and about her family and her son, YYY, and daughter, ZZZ. And ChatGPT is brilliant at working out what is a name, what is an address, what's a date of birth, replacing them automatically. And then the result of that day, we then pass to ChatGPT to ask it the question we were going to ask it in the first place. So we actually use ChatGPT to anonymize the data itself. And, and it's good. It's very, very good at doing that. So at what point did you figure out, because I think I figured out this way later, <laughs> that you can ask chat gpt about chat gpt like you could yeah. specifically say hey how do i use you basically to to do x y and z and it will point yeah. out three or four different ways so it, it, yeah it, 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 it takes a lot about itself yeah, you can yeah. you're, yes you have you, sometimes you have to, to take a deep breath before you think about what's going on what we've also realized <laughs> is that you can ask it to be somebody so you can ask it to be a, an expert javascript programmer and coach me in, in my JavaScript. So you can tell it to take on a persona. So you can say, in this conversation, you are not ChatGPT, you are an expert JavaScript developer coaching a junior JavaScript developer. Here's some JavaScript, help me with it. And it will right. talk to you in with that tone and with that in mind. Um, you can do it for X basic code, you can do it for JavaScript, you can do it for uh, web design, you can do it for all sorts of things. So you can ask it to be somebody and it will talk to you in that persona with that frame of mind. And um, that's really useful. <laughs> that is a neat trick. Wow, very cool. Um, let me see if we have anything else. Yeah, I just, I, I, I have a question, which is that, do you find problems with the fact that there are slight variances in the answers each time, that there is no real consistency or is that really not? so much been an issue because it's it, most of the time it's a positive i think it's a positive yeah um, but if you need it to be precise each time or be consistent each time there's yeah. when you call their api dave there's a factor called the temperature and you can vary the temperature and if you i can't remember which way uh, tom in our office he knows the, this better than i do uh, but you either go one way or the other and it will make it less random or more random that's and if you go right to the one end of the temperature scale you you'll get essentially the get the way. same result each time Neat. pretty much yeah so you can vary the the the, uh, the variability in the in the example i was showing in the bat report one um we think the variability is a good thing because they might click it two or three times until they get a version that they're happy with right um, yeah that makes sense so it, it's yeah. quite nice you know well, because it nicely then you you know you yeah. need to choose that yeah yeah Wow, Robin, thank you very much. This was absolutely terrific. Um, thanks, everyone, for joining. Looks like we're out of questions. Anyone who has further questions, go ahead and send them to guides, G-U-I-D-E-S, at alphasoftware.com. And when we post this on YouTube, there will be a whole bunch of links that'll go along with it. So we hope to have that up in the next uh, few days. Uh, till then, we look forward to seeing you at our next Alpha Software demo and Q&A webcast. Take care. Bye-bye.